Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, you know, we've had a bunch of folks up here today kind of already talk about some of the industry practices that are getting better, and I think this is super exciting, right? We're seeing security teams more empowered with more budget to be able to go affect change than ever before, for example. We're seeing at lower layers in the stack better infrastructure options and defaults, right? Cloud provider deployments are much more secure than they used to be. We're getting better at locking down the lower layers. The renewed focus on software supply chain and SBOM is great. Uh, we, don't, we don't quite know what to do with SBOMs yet. Uh, you know, that's kind of one of the, the big pain points today. But we are developing tools and practices around that that, again, should have big impact on how we deliver software securely. And some of the other efforts that we're seeing across the, the landscape include moving to, you know, runtime asserted computer verified uh, checks that we're implementing controls rather than, you know, a checkbox that we did once every year, right? Uh, projects like OSCAL, the open source compliance assessment language, help drive this automation and this computer verification. Net of all of this is that security is moving up the stack. Uh, Brian earlier talked about a bunch of attack vectors that they're, that they're looking at, and you know, none of them were the attacker got on the network and talked directly to the database and egressed a bunch of data, right? Much more sophisticated attacks now, and the policy that we want to write to be able to mitigate and, and time box uh, and you know, limit the space of an attacker needs to be more and more application context aware. We need to move that closer to the, to the application. Things like identity-based policy moving up from network-based policy is one way that we can do that, but there's a ton more that we need to start to apply. Zero trust itself isn't a mystery. There's a lot of FUD around what zero trust is. Uh, you know, it's fundamentally two things. It's people process and it's runtime controls that answer and mitigate the question what if the attacker is already inside the network? Around 2009, actually, is when the, the original kind of zero trust write-ups uh, came out. That's when the, the term started to appear. Uh, and that happens to coincide very closely with some leaks uh, where we found out that actually for quite a lot of major companies, somebody was in the network. That's what motivates a lot of, of the, the zero trust ideology today, right? So I want to make this a little bit more concrete, though. So just talking about runtime, not the people process side, there's a lot of kind of mystery around zero trust. And I really want to boil it down to something that we can kind of use as a litmus test for the, for the rest of this conference, yeah. right? There are five policy checks at a minimum that we should be doing if we want to call our system you know, zero trust. So we want to start to realize that idea of mitigating what an attacker who's already inside the perimeter can do. Yeah. And those five policy checks are here. We need, you know, we need authenticity of our messages and that they can't be eavesdropped. We need encryption in transit. We need service level identity that we can authenticate at runtime. Ideally, we want a cryptographic identity. We want to be able to use those identities to do runtime service to service authorization to control which workloads can talk to each other. Then we want to be able to take the end user into account as well. We, want to, we need to be authenticating the end user in session, and we need to be authorizing the actions they are taking on resources in the system. And all of this is not new, right? If you look at you know, things like API gateways and ingress gateways and similar, we, we do these checks usually. But we need to be doing them not just at the front door, but every single hop in our infrastructure, every single time anything is communicating, we need to be applying at minimum these five checks. Uh, and this is an area where there's active standards uh, that are evolving. Uh, we're going to introduce in a little bit later talk this uh, idea of this identity-based segmentation and using that to realize as ETA. Come check that out uh, basically immediately after the break, after keynotes, uh, in room 609. And that's, we'll dig into those five runtime checks and a lot more besides. And with that, thank you all.